If you haven't tasted a mure yet, I would urge you to taste one. We have a range of sweets. Ah. We are popular for again ethnic sweets of Karnataka, like dinkla do. Mm. There is something to watching dishes being prepared on firewood. I think the aroma yes. carries through in the dishes as well. And also because the heat is uneven, it also has its own character in the manner in which it cooks. Oh, that jonne bella is thick and almost to the texture where it's refusing to let the neer dosa lift itself up. It almost wants to trap that neer dosa within its thick viscous and I'm sure very sweet embrace. As you bite into the coconut, the coconut releases the earthy sweetness of that bella. Delicious. Hi folks, this is Kripal Amana, Gourmet on the Road and you're watching Food Lovers TV. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and strong. When you're on the highway, you want to stop at a place where you can trust the food. Where you want the food to be tasty, no doubt. But you also want it to be of the sort that will fortify you for your journey ahead and served in an experience that provides a refreshing break. One such destination for many travellers in Karnataka is Kamat Yatri Nivas with a string of eateries across the state. Today we are on our way to Kamat Lokaruchi in Ramanagara that's been a popular halt for travellers on this route for nearly a quarter of a century. It's been a while since I visited them last and I'm looking forward to savouring a traditional breakfast experience. Namaskara, how are you doing? Good sir, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Yes, Narayan Kamath. Narayan Kamath. Yes. So you are the person behind Kamath Yatri Nivas group? Yes, right now. Right yes, now, okay. Heading you're heading the group. And it was your father who began yes, this? Yes. A.S. Kamath. A.S. Kamath. And yes. when was that? Uh, 89. 89. Yes. He is part of Kamath Hotel's uh, family. Okay. Based in Hubli. Huh. So, 89 he created an offshoot. Okay. Kamath Yatrinas is their organization. Huh. And as you know, we are a popular chain of uh, restaurants and uh, highways in Karnataka. In the name itself, you have Kamath Yatri Nivas. So it's basically a space for travellers. Yes. Yatri Nivas. Yatri Nivas is the name of the organization. Huh. But Kamath Upachar huh. is the brand for our outlets on highways. So this is this is one of a place we made a start on highways with this outlet. Oh, this was the first one on first the highway. Out, way back in '95, it was conceptualized. So it's 25 years ago. Yeah, yeah, ago. And '96 we started operations. Huh. So you know, next door is Janapada Loka. Correct. And this is Loka Ruchi. You know. Ah. So the name is derived from Janapada Loka, and Loka Ruchi means you know the taste preference of people. And in 25 years, this place is still as popular. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, and what makes it so popular? The food, uh, the ambience, uh, the service. The entire conceptualization, the ideas were from my father. He wanted to build a structure which represents the architecture of Karnataka. So, influencing from stone pillars, the block stone pillars. From That's from uh, Hampi. Hampi. Ah, okay. Yes. And the traditional wall painting over here. You know, this reminds me of a large house, yes. perhaps in a rural area of Karnataka. Yes. It's difficult to place as to which part. The Mangalore tiles reminds you of the coastal areas. Yes. And then of course you have the stone pillars that is inspired by the architecture of the Hampi monuments. Yes. And even things like this very old uh, cashier's desk. Yes, yes. Even the display is a old uh, antique ah, piece. I can see some uh, Madhurwade in that display there. Yes, huh? yes. In Akhtar Delhi? This is Akki Roti. Akki Roti. What is the name of Sapsi? What is the name of Sapsi? It's Roti. 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 You know, I like the way she's using that banana leaf. To basically pat down that akki roti. Eh, nenne akki dhriya do? Kadle. Kadle nenne, ah. So some peanut oil that's gone on that banana leaf there. 
She's gonna pat that aki roti into the desired shape. अरे नो कटले का या अवरे काढो हाँ इतके तो अवरे काढो and this has been going on for last 25 plus years okay we've been using firewood here. firewood only okay it gives a distinct aroma and flavor to the food ah. yeah. so the people who work here they come from the local villages yes yes neighborhood villages ah. it's all local stuff ah okay There is something to watching dishes being prepared on firewood. I think the aroma yes carries through in the dishes as well and also because the heat is uneven it also has its own character in the manner in which it cooks. Ragi roti. Yeah that's ragi roti. So basically these are the screw pine leaves yes that go into the making of the mudes. It really na par local sikata hai Mangalore. Mangalore inda. The batter is placed in this, and then it is steamed. And an interesting aspect here is that the screw pine essence is also used to flavor food. Not of course here in Karnataka, but more in the north. And that's the leaf that they use here to make the mure traditionally. And that leaf also imparts a certain aroma, a very delicate aroma yes. to the mure. तो हिट्टे लिए नहीं थे। तो उतनी नेट तो पता है रवा। उतनी नेट तो पता है अकी तरी। वन दो के जी उतनी नेट आते हैं, वन दो एक के अकी तरी। केलोर जनरल मूर मूर पाल आकर रहा। ऐसा ना वन दो बड़े वन दो मुक्का। यहाँ के अष्टो कमी नहीं हो। अष्टो अष्टो पर रवा जैसे गट्टी बढ़ता है, हार्ड आकर जाए। इधर आते हैं इधर स्मूथ That is certainly something that I want to taste here today, and of course there's some vade happening here. Vade that's already been fried and kept. Sambar, this is no uta sambar, this is uta sambar. So uta sambar only tarkari yoga the. Idli sambar only. Tarkari yoga, but nuge kamat. Nuge kai. Ah, so basically there is a difference in the breakfast sambar yes. and the lunch sambar. Yes. So you want the breakfast sambar to be such that it's flavorful. But not too much vegetables, etc. But the lunch sambar is what you want to be a lot more fortifying, and therefore, plenty of vegetables that go into that lentil preparation. You may say, "Hello, Parme." Parme, how many years did you do this? Ipatar. Ipatar years. And then you start that. Then how many years did you do this? So, Idli do sambar. This do salpa sweet actira. Idli sambar, not the salpa. Idli sambar is it? Salpa actira. It is not. So what I've learned from Mr. Parmesh here for the idli sambar, they put a little bit of bella, little jaggery. But for the lunch sambar, there is no sweetness. Very interesting. ठीक है इलियन मरते हैं जरा कैसरी बात मरते हैं कैसरी बात तुप्पा हाँ तुप्पा तो परिमाणा मरते हैं वो अर्शिना आप तेरा सोल्पा सोल्पा राइट कलर ही क्या? कलर है वो दर्शन है। नेचुरल कलर। नेचुरल कलर। सो ही सेज़ आई डोंट यूज़ एनी कलर। इट्स ओनली सम टॉमरिक दैट गोज़ इन टू स्टेन इट्स लाइटली येलो। आह, देस आल्सो सम मिल्क विथ सम वाटर दैट्स गोइंग इन। ये ना कितने हाल आके दरे? कलर। कलर से कितने? आह, पाइनेपल। वंद रवा करो वंद काल सकरे वंद रवा वंद काल सकरे तुप्पा इधर लाने दा पर तुप्पा मिलते हैं आ सो यू टेक वन कप ऑफ रवा हाफ अ कप ऑफ तुप्पा काराबात काराबात ऐसा रहने दो ईश्वर राज ईश्वर राज निम्न कैसे वर्ष आगे थे अयोध्या आई बात ये लो इल्ली याद याद इल्ली समय में मोहते नलता सरिश मोहत नलवता जागा तो मुंचे बंदी थे रानी हो हाँ so I think people over a period of time when you've been at a place for a long time you lose track of how many years you've been I guess some of the cooks here are as old as a building as old as a structure so they have those stone pillars that resemble the Hampi monuments but I think the real pillars here are the cooks here yes, yes, who've yes. been working for the last 25 30 years whether it was parmesh there that we met making the sambar and right. ishwar naik here who is making the dosa ah yen dosa aagta ide idu masale masal dosa this is a firewood 
फ्यूएल्ड दो से तवा इधर नीर दो से हिट्टो ने लेने दे काय आकते रहा तेंगी काय के मते एड जीरी के जीरी के आकते रहा तेंगी ने काय नो हाल आकते रहा तेंगी ने काय नो काय रुपते रहा अक्की और ठीक है अक्की तरी आकते रहा अक्की रुपते रहा अक्की नंसी रुपते रहा अक्की नंसी रुपते रहा ये ना अक्की ऊट देके ऊट तक की टोमेटो चटनी उटसाइड So therefore, there is no soot, no fumes anywhere in the restaurant. All that is extracted through pipes. So it's a combination of traditional, traditional but done in a modern sort of way. So that is convenient for the people who are cooking, and also for those who are savoring the meal. Yeah. Sugar cane juice could I do? Yes, yes. So all our restaurants, ah. we don't serve soft drinks. We serve only fruit juice. Any of our highway restaurants, we have sugar cane juice. Ah, and uh, for food preparation also, we don't use food colors, Ajinomoto. So everything only natural ingredients are used in the food preparation. All right. So like for the kesari baat, we saw the use of yes. turmeric there. Yes. There's no artificial yes. color that Even goes in. Even the sweets. Ah, huh. all the sweets which we prepare. Ah, huh. not an ounce of uh, food color. It's all natural ingredients. You prepare your own sweets? Yes. We have a range of sweets. Ah. We are popular for again ethnic sweets of Karnataka. Like like Dink Ladu. Oh, Dink Ladu, made with the edible gum. Yes. yes. So this is what we call it. Bella du pak. Bella du pak. What is it? No. Dry fruits. Bada mo kasura. Ah. Yellu kaska se natural dry fruit. Roast made there. Ah. This is a popular sweet in North Karnataka and Maharashtra region. Ah. But the specific recipe which we have here huh. is from my grandmother, ah, my okay. paternal grandmother. So we are using that recipe till this day. That's why it's so unique to us. It has a good shelf life and highly nutritious, rich in nutrients and uh, very strong flavors. Very strong flavors. They say the dink ladu is also a good source of nourishment, nourishment and heat. Yes, yes. So therefore, young mothers yes, yes. are also advised to eat yes. dink ladu. Yes. इंक्सिस्टी करेक्ट डिंक लड्डू चीयर्स अंटू लड्डू ओ दैट लुक्स सो गुड इट्स मॉइस्ट इट्स स्टिकी एंड इट्स स्लाइटली वॉम यू आर डिलिशियस क्रंच ऑफ दी गम Yeah, that gari gari crunch of the antu. Then of course you got the stickiness, the sticky jamminess of that bella, and you can also taste all the tuppa. Tuppa, tuppa, tuppa. All the nuts have been roasted in tuppa, and that's what you are also tasting. Hmm. And then somewhere in there, the nuttiness of the sesame and of the poppy seeds, and also the coconut that goes into it is the dry coconut. So the dry coconut is grated. and i think the dry coconut also is great to hold on to latch on to the flavors whether it's of the ghee that comes in from the 
nuts that are roasted in the ghee or also of that molten jaggery we tasting it as soon as he is mixed it together but if you keep it for some time it will hold its shape thank you very much hmm next time these are jamun kurai there illi band rahe ಒಂದು ಮೂರ್ನಾಲ್ಕು ತಾಸು ಬರಬೇಕು ನಾನು ಇಫ್ ಐ ಟು ಶೂಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಐಯರ್ ಎಷ್ಟು ಬಗೆ ಇದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಭರ್ಪೂರ್ ಐಟಮ್ ಇದೆ ಬಂಡಕ್ಕಿ ಕೂಡ ಇದೆ ನಾರ್ತ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸೌತ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಎಲ್ಲ ಇದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ವೆರಿ ಮಚ್ ಕೌಸ್ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಕಾಮಧೇನು ಕಾಮಧೇನು Oh. We have cows here. So do you get milk from the cows? I can we see do. one uh, bull in the middle of... Yeah, yeah, we do get some milk. Some milk. But yeah, you know, we, uh, the cows are not for the purpose of milk here. Okay. We uh, worship them. You worship them. So you take care of them and... Yes, and once a year we have a Gau Puja. A Gau Puja? Gau Puja during Diwali. Ah. So we come here and pray to the cows. Ah. For our well-being, our organization's well-being. Okay. So you have different areas that people can sit yes, and... Yes. Uh, not just have food here spend some time you know relax and then go in fact m- many people after having lunch here they loiter around for half an hour one hour and then they move when they move yes ah mure chutney mate sambar the best part about the mure is even before you get to the mure and that's when you unwrap it you take out these little twigs that are holding that screw pine leaf so this is a leaf that is elongated in its shape and therefore lends itself to being fashioned into a cup bisi there so this mude has just come off the steamer and what's really nice is the mild slightly vegetal slightly leafy sort of an aroma that hits your nostrils the moment you open that leaf i also like the manner in which the leaf taints that mude like creamish you enough talking let's get to the eating ah mm, i love that aroma Mm. There's a slight hint of tartness. What's interesting here is the ratio of the uddana bele to the rice. So I'm told here they do a ratio of one part of the urad dal to one and a half, one three fourth of the rice of the akitari, and that's also important because that determines the texture that you taste in that mude or perhaps an idli. So if you have more of the rice rava you'll get more of a granular texture on your palate but out here because it's more of the uddana bele it's rather soft and the sort that clumps together in a bite mm. if you are from south kerala a mude is much more than a typical idli there are those of you who may say it what's the big fuss about the mude after all it's idli batter that is steamed in a cup that's fashioned out of this screw pine leaves ask somebody from south kerala somebody from mangalore and they will tell you it's much more than that beyond the character that the leaf imparts to the mude in terms of its aroma and in terms also of that slight steamed leafy sort of a flavor i don't know if you can relate to what i'm saying it is also an emotion for those of us in south kerala hmm let's savor the mude now with some chutney ah this mude is of chutney ni haake takshna it is giving itself to that chutney Mm. Kara is there. I can taste plenty of green chili in that. You can taste the graininess of that urugatle the putani. And then also there's a plenty of kai too, plenty of coconut too that you're tasting in that. And if it's too spicy, just go for the mude all by itself. Mm. If you haven't tasted a mude yet, I would urge you to taste one. Very different from an idli, although the principal components that is the urad dal and the rice the akitari are pretty much the same i'm losing my mood to that kai urugadle chutney mm. also this is a chutney that's rather well seasoned so i can taste the ogarne i can taste the saswe in that i think let's go for some of that sambar now that's a sambar that i would certainly like to get to know a little better with the aid of a spoon there's plenty of niruli in this sambar sulpa tomato kuda hai there Mm. It's got a slight light sweetish tinge that perhaps comes from the sweet acidity of the tomato and as I've learned from the cook here Parmesh they also add a bit of bella to that morning to the idli sambar 
the onions have been cooked to an extent where they still hold their translucent form but dissolve away when you place it in your mouth and what's interesting here is the fact that most of the people that work here in the kitchens have been working here for the last 25 30 years so there's a wealth of experience that they have with them in the preparation of the various dishes that you see and i think that's what makes kamath lokuruchi so popular so i think when people stop here they know they are definitely in for a good meal and what i also learned from the cook making the sambar he says that we also crush a bit of the drumstick kernels into the breakfast sambar one dish that you have to try here is definitely the moore mm. just place it on your tongue the moistness in the chutney and the sambar will do the rest that moore disappears dissolves away in a pool of spicy deliciousness i think that chutney is a spicy sort also has made me sweat a bit at the back of my head so this akki roti is is roasted over a wood fire what i love is the translucent character of that akki roti which is rather keen rather eager to reveal all that it contains so i can definitely see some plenty of sabse ke sabko the dill there's the hitkidu avre bele the hyacinth beans that have been peeled i can see some chili somewhere perhaps some jeere ge to some curry leaves as well this is an akki roti that's toasted rather well so the surface of an akki roti is rather uneven so there are these slight undulations that you will find so that part which is kiss the tawa is what you will find toasted nicely and the other parts will be softer and of course it's served with a gojju and a garlic a belluli chutney mm. full sabse ke sab kuch flavor gama gama parimala hodi tha there finally i love the aroma that dill brings and of course there's also some chili that snuck into that bite so i can feel the heat of that chili too i think i'm going to keep aside some of the chili the flavor of the dill and the toastiness of that akki roti as it is roasted on that tawa and when you bite into some onions you also tasting a bit of sweetness and that avre bele brings to the bite its creamy starchy sort of a texture but if you don't like too much chilies you should probably ask them to go a little easy on the chili if they can or make sure that you keep the chili aside because the chili doesn't really roast too much as that akki roti is being cooked so therefore that chili can be quite robust in its spiciness and its heat and that's really what i'm tasting on the tip of my tongue mm. let's taste it now with that gojju mm. that tomato gojju there's some ginger too in that and because of the tomato there's a certain sweetness that offsets the heat of the green chili so i think when you eat the akki roti here and if you don't have a high threshold for spice eat it with plenty of that tomato onion gojju mm. and the seasoning of the mustard there's also some kai that's gone into it some coconut mm. delicious let's now taste it with that garlic chutney mm. full belluli belluli sulpa kai the I think they also add some tamarind into it because I can also taste a bit of the sourness in that chutney. But what you're tasting mostly is the full-on pungency of the garlic. Mm. And I think there's also some red chili powder, perhaps that goes into that. I'm not sure, but there's also some heat that you taste in that chutney. My combination, though, is the akki roti with the tomato gojju. Super. Well, we got for ourselves a neer dosa. This is a neer dosa that's cooked over a wood-fired dosa iron. And what's interesting is the assortment of things that you get with this neer dosa here. So, of course, a South Canara staple is the bella kai. Translates to jaggery and coconut. And what they do here is they sain the bella kai with a bit of turmeric. I'm told there's also some cardamom that goes into it. And then there's a garlic chutney. A garlic chutney. There's plenty of garlic, of course, fortified with some red chilies. I'm told they use a biargi mensen kai, some tomatoes, of course, that go into it. There's also the tamarind that gives it a lovely tart sort of an edge. 
and this is something that i've never tasted with a neer dosa before this is what they call the jurne bella or the liquid bella and this i'm told is quite popular in north canara which is the kumta sirsi side so the family behind kamat yatri nivas comes from north karnataka hubli and they've traveled through the state and therefore it's their aspiration to present different parts of the state in their eateries and in this case on this neer dosa platter and then they have a kurma that is served with that neer dosa so this is a neer dosa that's made by ishwar and he says he's been here longer than this eatery has been around ah mm. so some places they make the neer dosa without the coconut and that basically makes the neer dosa very thin almost paper like but out here they fortify the neer dosa with some coconut fresh coconut that's ground with the soaked and drained rice and that's why this neer dosa is also the sort that's a tad heavy that makes for a sumptuous breakfast so it's sticky around the center slightly toasty slightly crisp around the edges that's the sort of texture that this neer dosa has and the reason why they call it a neer dosa of course as i've said earlier in all videos where i've tasted the neer dosa but it's my favorite fun fact neeru means water and the consistency of the batter as it's poured on that dosa tawa is that of water this is also a dosa that needs no fermentation no preparation other than the fact that you need to soak the rice for some time you need absolutely no preparation drain the soaked rice grind it in the mixer with the fresh coconut some salt etc and that's it you've got your neer dosa mix ready and of course some people add a few things to it so for example they i know of some cooks who add some cumin to it some jeerige but even if they add it it'll be very subtle and you hardly decipher it hmm i think i'm going to go for my favorite part of that neer dosa first with that bella kai as you bite into the coconut the coconut releases the earthy sweetness of that bella should be told i'd be happy just with that neer dosa and the bella kai delicious but i think i got to taste some of the other accompaniments to that bella kai too so i'm going to grudgingly reluctantly keep that bella kai on the side i want to taste next that jonne bella from the bella kai to the jonne or the liquid bella oh that jonne bella is thick and almost of the texture where it's refusing to let the neer dosa lift itself up it almost wants to trap that neer dosa within its thick viscous and i'm sure very sweet embrace mm the texture of that jonne bella is like that of honey but then you're tasting the earthiness that only jaggery brings that earthy sweetness oh it's thick and the salt that coats your palate almost immediately i think if you have a spoon of this all by itself all that remains on your tongue is its syrupy stickiness and i think on that note we should perhaps move to that garlic chutney just to cleanse our palate of some of that sweetness before we taste the kurma Mm. And because I tasted the sweetness, the acidity, the sourness of the hunse annu, and also the tomatoes in the garlic beluli chutney is a lot more sharper. You know that's a wonderful thing about how flavors work together. If I tasted it before the jonne bella, I'm sure the sourness would have been much balanced. But because I tasted it after that sticky sweet assault of that jonne bella. the sourness in that beluli chutney too wants to match the vociferousness of the sweetness in that jonne bella that's a beautiful thing about food and that's the reason why i never get bored of food and especially when i'm tasting new things and new combinations and ingredients let's get now to that kurma hmm sumat tarkari there really beans are there So the hyacinth beans, I think, are in season now, and therefore, it's available everywhere. Mm. Also, plenty of coconut in this, and I'm told there's some coconut paste that goes into it. So this is a kurma that's quite rich. But I'm going to go back to seek the familiar divine comfort of that bella kai. Chow chow baat. 
I requested them to serve me small portions of the chow chow bath, which is both the khara bath and the kesri bath, because I saw these being prepared by Paramesh right there. So I wanted to taste it before we left Kamath Lokaruchi. Why do they call it the chow chow bath? Khara bath and kesri bath together. Huh. It's given with some chow chow on top. The mixture? The mixture. Huh. Some over period of time, the chow chow has been phased out. And it's only this two things uh, which is remained. Ah. The chow chow name is also being, it means mix. Well, if you know why it's called the chow chow bath, if you have a different answer or if you want to support what he just said, please do post in the comments below. Vegetable kara bath. Actually, more than the rava, I'm seeing the vegetables. I can see some onions there, carrots, curry leaves, sumari there. Mmm. Sulpa Godambi Kuda is there, Sumar Kai is there, there's plenty of coconut that I'm tasting in that. This is a khara bath that isn't as runny as some of the other khara baths that you will taste. This is a khara bath that's quite fortified with the vegetables. Avre bele is really say there. So I think Avre bele is in season, so some Avre bele in this too. So Avre bele, beans, carrot, Sumar Bagi hoge there, there really. Onions are Sumar hoge there, there really. Mmm. It's flavorful as is, but if you like, you could also taste some. Taste it with some chutney or taste that curry leaf in that scoop. Mm. This is a tasty khara bath. In terms of its texture and I refer to the guttiness or the consistency of it, it's closer to what you would expect in a South Canada sort of an uppittu. But the difference here is that there's plenty of vegetables that gone into that. It reminds me almost of something that we call the sajige in Mangaluru. And to end things on a sweet note, the Kesri Bath. Mm. You can taste the flavour of the cardamom in that. Plenty of pineapple that's gone into it. Mm. And I'm biting into some of its slightly pulpy fibrous strands now. And the sweet nuttiness of some cashew, some godambi. While this Kesri Bath was being made, we saw a fair bit of tuppa that goes into it, but it isn't the sort of indulgence where you will have the tuppa seeping out from the kesari bath. But you can certainly taste its buttery fervor in the dish. Jalebi order made lala. Okay, they want me to taste some tuppa to jalebi. Fresh shagi made the rente. And he said tuppa jalebi. Uh, so tuppa is the operative word where it comes to me. Tell me anything with tuppa and I'll be a sucker to try it. Tuppa is there, Nija? Yes, yes. Tuppa is there, Lala? No, no. <laughs> Just verifying. Mm. As you crunch into the jalebi, all that tuppa comes to meet your palate as if to ask you, did you question our existence in this tuppa the jalebi? Well, here we are. That's really what this tuppa the jalebi is all about. What I also like is that the chashni isn't too sweet. There's a Slight tinge of tartness. A good jalebi should have that sweet and also have that slight, slight tinge of tartness that comes either from fermentation or from some yogurt that goes into the batter. Well, that was an enjoyable breakfast here at Kamath Lokaruchi. It's been a while since I visited this place and to be honest, I didn't really remember much of it. But the one thing that's most striking about Kamat Lokaruchi is the attempt that they have made to present Karnataka in a meal, be it for breakfast or lunch or dinner. I've enjoyed almost everything that I tasted, right from the neer dose to the akki roti, not to forget the mude, and also the khara bath, kesri bath, tuppa the jalebi. And also that very special dinka laddu that I tasted soon after the sweet master here had rolled it into a ladu. And beyond the food, it's also the sort of space that makes for an enjoyable break when you've been on the highway for a few hours. When Kamath Yatri Niva's group began Kamath Lokaruchi 25 years ago in this location, the Bengaluru Mysuru Highway used to be a two lane road that would twist and turn onwards to Mysuru. There weren't the number of eateries that you see on this route today. But despite being 25 years old, Kamath Lokuruchi still reigns as one of the most popular stops on this stretch of the highway. And that's purely on the basis of the food that's served here. The cooks here have spent decades dishing out the food that they do here. 
and coupled with the group's philosophy of ensuring that everything is served to the customer fresh, hot, minus all artificial colors, additives, etc., has ensured that this eatery still reigns supreme as the preferred and one of the most popular dining destinations on the Bengaluru Mysuru Highway. So, if you happen to be on this route and you want to taste some delicious flavors of Karnataka, Definitely stop by at Kamat Lokaruchi in Ramanagara. I hope you enjoyed this slightly extended episode of Gormi on the Road. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, stay strong and happy eating and drinking. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating! <laughs>